So friends, uh, if you look at the screen, I have written here maxima and minima. And in the next line, I have written second derivative test. So when we look at all these things, there are a few things that automatically came into our mind. Like uh, we all know that if fx is a function, is a function, we find the second derivative of this function at a given point x equals to c then we get these things suppose we get f double dash c more than zero then we all conclude that the given function will be minimum at this point x equals to c if the second derivative of a function at a point c is less is more than zero then we all conclude that this function is going to be minimum at this point x equals to c second thing that we conclude if second derivative of a function at a given point c is less than zero then our function is going to be maximum at that point x equals to c when we study the chapter we almost all of us understand these things and we always use these concepts in our question solving when we talk about the reason why what is the reason behind these concepts these two things how can second derivative of a function decide about the maximum or the minimum value of a function so in this video i have tried to explain this concept if you want to understand how second derivative test can decide about the maximum or minimum value of a function then you need to know a few things first of all we try to understand the meaning of the second derivative of a function meaning of second derivative see when we talk about derivation first order derivative at dash x then it actually means d over dx of the given function fx we can rewrite this thing as change in fx change in fx so with these two lines you can understand that derivation of a function is actually is actually measuring the change in that function so continuing with the same concept if i write f double dash x then this will be equal to the derivative of f dash x derivative of the derivative of a function we can write this thing as change in change in f dash x so if you are able to measure the change in the derivative of a function initially you were measuring the change in the function when you measure the change in the function you get the first order derivative f dash x but if you measure the change in the derivative of a function measuring the change in f dash x is actually double dash x this is the first thing that you need to know understanding of the and concept that we are that is challenging us in this video so second thing that we need to know is slope of line if you draw a cartesian plane a simple cartesian plane and draw two lines in it one line is moving from bottom to top from down to up and there is another line which is moving from top to bottom okay so you can see if a line is moving from bottom to top like this i should use the same color as i have shown here otherwise it will confuse you if your line is like this the slope of this line will be positive and if you take a line which is moving from top to bottom or up to down then the slope of this line will be negative 
Now we know two things. First thing is here, that is second derivative of a function is actually equal to the change in the first derivative of the function. And the other thing is about the slope of lines. If a line is moving from bottom to top, down to up, its slope will be positive. If a line is moving from up to bottom or up to down, then the slope will be negative. Uh, this concept can be explained in a separate video. I want to make this video not that long. So I have just explained you this thing in short. Now we come to our point. Point is how can second derivative test decide about our functions? How can it decide that the function is going to be maximum or minimum? Just remember the two things that I have explained you it all. Look, here we have drawn a partition plane and now we draw a simple function. A simple function. I just mark two points. I just mark point A here and two points which are at the left and at the right of this point A. Let this point be B and let this point be C. What I do, simple thing, I just draw tangent to the given function or the given graph at point A, at point B, and at point C. Let me first draw it at point A. This is the tangent at point A. Now I draw the second one that is at point B. B. Okay. And the third one we can draw at point C. Here. Here are the three tangents. Okay. When you look at the first tangent, the blue one, the slope of this tangent will be zero because this line is parallel to x axis. So slope. Slope of line passing through A will be zero. So I just take this one as first line as x1 passing through x1 and the second line passing through x2 and the third line passing through x3. So what I can write here, the slope of first line is zero. The slope of second line second line which is passing through B. you can see this line is uh, we have drawn this line moving from bottom to top towards a because we want to measure the change at you know so that's why this line is moving from B to a so it's moving from bottom to top so its slope will be what will it be positive or negative we have just discussed this thing that was the reason I have discussed it above its slope will be positive you can notice it here so write this thing as it's positive, that means it's more than zero. The slope of third line is opposite to the second, it's moving from bottom to top because we are moving from A to C is the point where we want to calculate the change. So this will be less than zero. So when I want to calculate change from B to A only, from B to A only from this point to this point. So change in slope, you know, you measure the change from right to left. Okay, so when you stand here, point A is at your right and point B is at your left. So when you measure the change here, then you first write slope of line passing through a that is zero minus change means you need to subtract slope of the line passing through b that is more than zero means something positive for example i am assuming it as 0.5 so the final answer will be minus of 0.5 that is actually less than zero so that means change in slope At point A less than zero, I can replace this change in slope by change in f dash x 
and you know the uh, the upper portion of this video we have explained that change in f dash x is actually called second derivative of the function that is less than zero. Okay, so at point A, at point A, the second derivative of your function is less than zero means it's negative. You can see this point A is actually the maximum point of your function. So this is the way to decide about the maximum or minimum value of a function using the second derivative. This is the enough thing which we can understand. Now we'll confirm our understanding with one more test. If you look at the same line, if you look at the same graph, there is a tangent passing through point C. It's moving from A to C, so actually it's moving in the downward direction. So what should be the slope of this line? It's moving from up to down. So the slope of this line should be positive. Slope of line at C. Write it here. Slope of line at C is equals to negative. Just give it a numerical value for, for better understanding this. So if we want to measure the change from C to A, you can see that point C is lying at the right of point A and change is measured from right to left. So change in the slope of line, change in the slopes, change in the slopes. As I have told you, it's always from right to left. So we will first write the slope of line that is at the right, that is minus of 0.5. And the line that is at the right, the slope 0. So change here is minus of 0.5. You can replace this change in slopes by change in f dash x and you have already studied that change in f dash x is measured or equal to f double dash x and this is minus of 0.5 f double dash x is less than 0 at point A so thus value of this function at point A will be maximum and from the graph you can notice that this is the point where the function is reaching at its topmost numerical value. Okay, I hope you all understand it. Thank you very much.